you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right. Good afternoon, gentlemen. All right. I saw Agent Donald Fitzgerald in the hall. I think he's also a part of this case. Do you? Um, can we proceed without him at this time? I don't have objection to uh, his testimony being proffered as part of the report. No. All right. Now I understand that this is a plea. That is correct. Uh, for the record, Mr. Chairman, Frank Boozer, on behalf of Chill, Chong, and Max, is of charge, Charles Village LLC Trading is Max, who's Pizza Bar and Grill. Present to my right is licensee and operator, Chill Chong. Uh, that, your understanding is, uh, is correct. This is going to be an admission uh, as to uh, rule, violation rule 4.01A on October 6, as well as an admission to a violation of rule 4.01A on October uh, October 18th. All right, and specifically the uh, the 4.01, the first 4.01A plea charge will be to the sale of alcohol to a patron born 224.94. I believe his name was uh, Mr. Oliver. That right, is correct. Right. And that's the charge that matches up. So, um, commissioners, will go ahead and, and uh, accept that plea. So, we'll, um, after um, hearing corroborating evidence on the 2401A charges, we'll go ahead and dismiss the other charges today. That's, um, that's our understanding. But thank you very much for being here. Um, Officer Greenhill and Officer Hightower, you um, were able to, um, in fact, you did purchase uh, an alcoholic beverage um, while under the age of 21 years, isn't that right, from the subject establishment? Yes, sir. Um, did you prepare any kind of written report, or are you relying on Detective Greenhill's report? Relying on uh, Detective Greenhill's report. All right, um, Detective, and, and you are indeed our um, Cadet Hightower. Yes, sir. And you are under the age of 21 years. Yes, sir. All right, and your date of birth is? 08 13, 1992. 1992. All right, thank you very much. And? Hightower. Darrell. Darrell, do you need me to spell it? D-E. Stand closer to the microphone, please. D-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. All right, thank you very much, um, Cadet. Uh, Detective Greenhill, uh, you submitted a report into evidence with our agency. It is, uh, in fact, dated October 18, 2012. Isn't that right, sir? Yes, sir, I did. Therein, you indicate um, that you and members of VCIS Vice, uh, utilizing the Baltimore cadet, Mr. Hightower, conducted an investigation at 3003 North Charles Street. Yes, sir. All right, and that was again on October 18, 2012, around 9.25 p.m. Yes, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Hightower uh, entered the establishment uh, and bought a uh, drink for $5 and received $15 in change from the bartender working at the subject premises. Isn't that right? Also correct, sir. All right, and indeed he purchased a 12-ounce bottle of Corona beer at Maxie's Pizza Bar and Grill. That's correct. All right. Um, any additions or corrections to your report, sir? No additions, no corrections. And in fact, you verified that the cadet was under 21 years of age at the time of the sale? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. We'll enter your report into evidence without objection. No objection, no questions of the, uh, the officer, Mr. Chairman. All right, and then we have um, other evidence in the file, um, including a letter from Fire Inspector Gross, who is here today, um, a police report from Officer Jacques, uh, and a uh, agent report, liquor board report by Agent Donald Fitzgerald. Do you have any objections to the entry of the report by Officer Jacques? No objection to the admission of the documents. All right, therein uh, it indicates uh, that on October 6, 2012, that uh, at approximately 12.30 a.m., uh, that the officer arrived and saw several individuals who appeared to be under 21 years of age. Uh, he was only able to identify one inside the bar area in possession of and drinking uh, an alcoholic beverage. And the gentleman's name was Brian Oliver, white male, uh, 18 years old, date of birth 224.94 of Amityville, New York. And that will conclude um, the portion of the report dealing with the 4.01A violation of October 6, uh, October 6, 2012. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, any, um, any objections to any, any of the report testimony? None at all. All right, then. Those reports will be received in evidence. Um, based on your uh, guilty plea and the corroborating evidence, we do find your client guilty of two counts of 4.01A occurring on different dates. We'll hear from you in mitigation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In a sense, uh, Mr. Chong here uh, is a victim of his own success. Uh, he runs a uh, predominantly a pizza establishment uh, in the basement of a 
presidential uh, dormitory at Johns Hopkins. The kids like to go there, they like to eat pizza. He also has, obviously, a liquor license. Uh, he does sell alcohol, obviously, the amount of alcohol sold is nowhere near the amount of food uh, that's sold. On the dates in question, um, the kids apparently come back from fraternity parties, house parties, other parties, and they like to stop in to get a bite, bite to eat. I think not abnormal for a college kid or maybe you know, anyone else uh, in their uh, younger uh, 20s. Uh, and they come to his establishment and they like to get pizza. Unfortunately, this young man in question, Mr. Oliver, uh, did, have a, uh, did have an alcoholic beverage and was consuming it uh, on the premises. My client does have adequate security. Uh, they do card uh, everyone that comes in, but unfortunately some people that do come in, come in to get pizza and not for alcohol. So obviously, someone's going to say, we're going to you know, purchase a pizza or purchase uh, you know, something else, some other item of food. <coughs> Security in this case didn't obviously catch someone with an alcoholic beverage, Mr. Oliver, going back into the bar, uh, and he would contend that none of the other kids that were in the bar uh, on the nights in question were actually served at his establishment. Uh, I think the board can uh, take notice that if the officer were to walk in and suddenly you know, 40 kids scatter uh, and suddenly there are empty uh, or half empty alcoholic beverages everywhere, that would be to me an indication of someone drinking. Unfortunately. They drink somewhere else, they show up there, and I think in, in a sense the right and responsible thing uh, for him to do, and I remember uh, learning as part of college or freshman year we had to take an alcohol uh, class, is that getting food in your stomach is probably the best thing that you can possibly do uh, after, uh, after a night of drinking. So whether or not Mr. Chong can control them drinking in another establishment, I think in a sense he is doing them and the community a, a small favor by allowing them to eat so we can prevent alcohol poisoning uh, and the like. As for the, uh, the cadet, Mr. Chong has dismissed uh, the, the server in question. That's absolutely uh, not to be tolerated. He's made that known uh, to the, uh, the employees at his establishment. In addition to that, he's going to have all of his uh, servers alcohol trained. They were taking the, uh, the TAM certification. And he's going to be looking into, at my, uh, at my advice, into getting a, a scanner machine. If you've seen these things, the, uh, they put the cards from is. Chairman Minkin in Baltimore County used to say uh, they might not work uh, all the time, but to a teenager, those things are like a cross to a vampire. They'll, uh, they'll run away. I think, um, as I said, he's really a victim of his own success. The kids like to go there. He's in a young neighborhood. Um, I'd like the board to note there's obviously no complaints of disruption in the community. He does uh, keep a tight lid on what goes on in his establishment. We're looking at you know, maybe 100 or so allegedly intoxicated uh, underage uh, kids, no fights, no yelling, no screaming, no, no breaking of anyone's personal property. Uh, so it, the situation is under control in the fact that he isn't causing a disruption to the community. Uh, I just think he has to, and I've told him he needs to tighten up his security procedures a little more so he can ensure that this, uh, this won't happen again. He won't be uh, in front of the board. Mr. Chong, would you like to say anything uh, based on what I've said? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Chong. Anything else? Uh, nothing else, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, Agent Fitzgerald, anything to add? Uh, all right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for being here, uh, Inspector. Thank you. All right, we'll go off the record. Okay, so I need one second. Sure. All right, we're on the record, decision phase, December 13th, 2012. Chil Chong and Joyce Young Chong, Max's Charles Village LLC, trading as Maxie's Pizza Bar and Grill, 3003 North Charles. Uh, board is uh, considering, has considered a number of charges today against the licensee um, based on a plea uh, and the review of evidence in the police report. Um, the licensee did uh, agree to plead guilty to a single count of 41A occurring on October 6, 2012, and a single count of 401A occurring on October 18, 2012. Um, both uh, the charges were uh, corroborated. Uh, the cadet is present, Detective Greenhill's testimony and police report, the police report of Officer Jacques uh, for October 6, 2012. We do have Agent Fitzgerald present. His report is in evidence as well. Uh, and we'll, so is the uh, report of the inspector, the fire inspector, uh, Herb, Herbert Gross. Um, 
the board based on that plea, and we do find by a preponderance of the evidence the guilt of both of those charges, and based on our agreement, we will dismiss the remaining charges. Um, with respect to the first charge, October 6th, um, let me just say that you know, I, I understand, Counsel, you say that uh, your client is a victim of his own success. Well, we obviously don't consider him a victim at all in these proceedings. Um, we're just uh, glad um, with the situation there um, that no one got hurt. And um, obviously it sounds like a chaotic scene um, on October 6th. So the licensee has indicated that he's taken steps to make sure that that doesn't happen again and, um, and to implement a card reader device as well. Uh, as you know, on a first offense, it's 401A, it's $500 fine. Um, we go to the October 18 charge again. Cadet Hightower is here. We've got report corroboration uh, and a guilty plea. Uh, Proponents of the evidence, we do find that uh, Cadet Hightower, under the age of 21, was served an alcoholic beverage on or about October 18, 2012, by an employee of the subject establishment. So finding guilty of that um, by a preponderance um, for that second offense, uh, it, it is increasingly more expensive. In this case, that fine alone will be $2,375. There's also a $125 hearing fee today for a grand total of $3,000. Um, Mr. Chong, your lawyer will tell you, um, we, you've reached the end of the road here as far as um, underage activity. So. Um, if we see you again in an underage drinking situation, you could expect a suspension from this board. But we'll hope that that card reader works, and we'll hope that you understand the seriousness uh, of the matter going forward. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. We are off the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you.